Hi everyone, this is Vlad from Modulus Render and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about soft directional lighting using SketchUp and Enscape. First of all, let's take a look at the scene. It's a very simple room, four walls and one window, just one opening to test the lighting and a section plane in the back. Something different that I did for this scene is that I rounded every, every corner using Fredo Corner to have uh, the light bounce a little bit off these little curves here and it shows in the final render. And it's just a floor and four walls. I have all the, the furniture hidden here on different layers. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit of the uses of this uh, of this uh, soft directional light. Or I wanted to talk to you about the benefits of having soft directional light. Because usually I... Uh, if you've seen my, my other tutorials in Enscape, I usually put a light plane or some sort of fill light here and then... Uh, light the whole scene but this fill light is um, spilling let's say in all of the room so it doesn't have a, a certain direction like the sun would have and the sun in Enscape is too sharp so I don't want to use it in this scene and I wanted to direct this soft light so I've come up with something that I would call a light tunnel and I'll build it with you together here so you can see the effect uh, and all the steps that I, I made to have this kind of lighting. First of all, let's start Enscape and see what we have as far as lighting and uh, render settings are concerned. Now this is the room as it looks now with just an HDRI lighting the scene. Let me just open up the settings so you can see what I did. It's pretty dark. So the exposure is set to 63 and I've uh, unticked the auto exposure. Of course, you can go higher or lower, but I find that, you know, increasing the exposure a lot in the first stages of the lighting will give you a lot of noise because the only light or the only light samples that are coming into the scene are from the outside and we have no sun. So uh, it's uh, any program would be struggling to light the scene with just an ambient light or a dome light and just exposure. So it looks pretty good, but you'll see some noise in the shadow area. So I don't want to do that. We'll just leave it as it was around 63. You can always come back and tweak this if you'd like. The field of view is 54. And then uh, I took out the auto contrast. I usually bring it, the shadows, I bring them down to minus 100 and the highlights to minus 50 and that's about it here then for the sun brightness as i said i didn't want to use the uh, the sun because it seems too sharp uh, even with the shadow sharpness down to zero so no sun here and then i use the skybox uh, i made a white hdri image it's just an image that is uh, 6000 by 3000 pixels so it's two by one aspect ratio uh, in 32 bits. It's just a white image made in Photoshop that I added to the uh, to the skybox here. And then as you can see this is the default um, value 2000 lux and then you can go higher and higher and light your scene then adjust exposure. But again if I go too high with this we'll have some some artifacts over here some noise so we're just going to leave everything as it is here and the output is 4k so just auto exposure unticked auto contrast and a white dome lighting the whole scene i use a white dome because uh, if i have the normal sky with uh, white background ticked it will still uh, spill into the image some some blue light some or better yet some color right if it's uh, yellow or blue depending on the time of day but i just want a pure white 
um, image lighting the whole scene so I have better control over the colors in the final image. Now, the challenge is to have soft directional lighting and I want um, I want soft uh, and directed lighting so I want more control over the angle of light and still maintaining the softness of the light so the first thing I want to do is let me just fix the camera over here I want to build a tunnel so I want the, the light to go through a tunnel that I could just orient the way I want so let's do a, a little test this will be our tunnel maybe make it a little bit longer and then delete everything reverse these faces and you'll see why and then let me just group it and then over here we're going to place some lights that are going to go through this tunnel that will orient them so i played with all kinds of lights and feel free to use any kinds of lights you want but for this example i wanted to use the sphere lights so i have one light and then i wanted to do a little grid maybe use three over here and I'm always looking at how the render changes or how it looks when I add different lights and then maybe or more rows so there's more light coming in maybe increase these values and see what happens maybe exaggerate them a little bit so we're starting to have more samples coming from a direct light filling the room right so it looks a little brighter we can tweak this and control this very easily from here now the directional part is very simple we just move everything a little bit to the right and then move everything higher up and this is the way we can control the direction of the lighting we just increase these values So you see the light is concentrated over here in this area and it looks pretty cool. Now I used uh, the sphere light because the shadows that it creates are very very well blended together. If you use spotlights, you'll see the, the the shapes of the spotlights are very visible in, in the render. So in this case, it looks pretty nice, very soft. Let's put some furniture here so we can, we can see the, the shadows on the wall as well. Let me just open the layers, maybe the side table here. You see these shadows over here are looking very nice. I know it's still pretty dark. Let's put the olive tree. And there you see those those very fine and soft shadows. Now in the final render you'll see some lines. I think they're too fine to see in in the video, but 
there are some lines here from all these uh, lights that are that are lighting the scene and you probably noticed I, I reversed the faces of this tunnel and I'll explain now why because I want to add apart from the lights that are coming in uh, I want to add an emissive material to the walls of this tunnel so we're gonna go to materials pick a color usually white I'll just make it pink and then turn it white so you see the effect this has just as a color on the whole uh, light or the whole mood of the light so you see I've just added the color uh, it's not even emissive and it has a huge effect on the on the image so of course we can modify this color and you know play with it make it warmer make it colder whatever we want this could be you know a cool experiment too but for now let me just make it white and make this material emissive and just leave it at 5000 and you'll see the the image changed a lot because this emissive material that is over here of course this will work for this kind of image just looking straight at the wall and not looking out the window because out the window will be just pure white so uh, if you want to add a background or something in the background over there you might want to use uh, a different technique or Photoshop to put something in but you see the the emissive light just amplifies uh, everything in the room and it blends together the shadows of the different light types so uh, even if you have spotlights here or line lights or any kind of disc rectangular light this uh, emissive light in the tunnel again that that you can control like the intensity of the lights the emissive material the uh, white dome outside so you can control all of those you have a lot of control over the image uh, I'm sorry over the lighting and that emissive light is very important because it blends everything together like this so you have a very uh, well lit room and even you know more uh, softer shadows and it's looking pretty good just with those lights let's add the carpet let's add the bed maybe all the furniture to see the the scene completed and there's an armchair here in the foreground You will see the dark areas are very very dark because there's no fill light there's no uh, extra lights that I used and to remedy this I just made another opening over here or you can do another opening uh, here in the back wall to have some light spilling in from the HDRI or you can actually put some uh, accent lights or extra lights over here so let's just make a hole in the wall and let some light come in or you can even do the the back wall you can make it uh, an emissive light so it will bounce everything uh, back and have some lighting of its own as a matter of fact let's try both cases to see how it looks now of course if you make another window over here We'll have some light coming in. So I'm looking at these areas here that I want to have more lighting. Or more extra lighting. Looks pretty nice. But now you see we have the 
the fake window in the scene, so we don't want that. But this is how I made the final image because it was something like this, close to this angle. So I didn't it didn't bother me that I had this uh, opening here in the wall. Let's try the other method to make the back wall more emissive or just make it white to see how it looks. Like a bounce wall or a reflector wall. Let me just turn off the section plane and just apply this plain white color on the wall and see the effect. And here we have the final uh, image with the bounce wall in the back. And in this case, I opened up the wall over here as well. So we have both of them bringing in some, some fill light in the whole room. And you see these dark areas are starting to look a lot, a lot better. And this is basically it. The most important part is to have the light tunnel with the emissive light because it will blend every shadow together. And to show you that, I've made a few tests so you can see what I mean. Uh, in this example, the image is lit only by the sky with a uh, white background uh, checked. And you can see this blue uh, hues that are all over the room. And then the, uh, I've added the sun, which is very, very sharp, even though uh, shadow sharpness is down to zero. But you can see the, the blue hues and the yellow ones. And then this is with the white dome, just the HDRI lighting the scene. And you can clearly see, you know, some of the uh, shadows uh, intersecting over here. And then when you add the emissive light to the tunnel, you get this effect. So it blends everything together, brings a lot more light into the scene, and we get rid of any artifacts or, uh, you know, uh, patches in the shadows or kind of errors in the image. I'm sorry, this is the HDRI one, and this is the one with the light tunnel without the emissive lights. And this is with the emissive lights. This is just the white HDRI where you have no uh, blue uh, hues or yellow ones from, from the environment, just a white dome, basically. And this is the light tunnel without the emissive light and with the emissive light. So you can see the difference. And now we are ready to set up our scenes, our camera angles, and start rendering. Now these are some of the images that I made using this technique. If you found this information useful, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.